we're making some pretty good progress. We've got a portion of the driveway widened further and we're now getting back into where we left some brush piles last year. Um, he's just dragging them out with the, with the tractor. The tractor is saving us so much time. It was a big purchase and it was a little bit sad to buy a tractor because what we really would rather be doing is is keeping things as simple as possible but we're also on a timeline and um, want to make things as efficient as possible so um, all in all the tractor feels like a pretty good purchase right about now so anyway um, yeah we're just gonna keep clearing this out this is the spot where the the shop is gonna go the driveway to the shop initially and then the shop itself so can also pile some stuff up beyond where the shop will be a little ways out in that swampier area okay you know just like yeah. toss it out there yes. and pile it up okay and make like Dave said kind of a long stretch down there on that other side it'll be away from where the shop will be and that'll help that way we don't have to keep dragging brush out there dragging brush here but for a little bit like we can just uh for a little bit right now we can just drag a little bit of this out Okay. But then once I get cut in that way toward the aspens, because I'd like to have those aspens opened up anyway. I yeah. I want to be able to see them yeah. more. Definitely. And, uh, hear them They're beautiful. more. beautiful. That'll be really cool and beautiful. It's sad and that we have to cut all these big trees I down. I know. That but is the, this whole little beautiful meadow of wildflowers and everything. I'm just like, oh, I don't want to get it down. But yeah. But I think we'll be able to keep all of those yeah. there. Okay. All the big ones there. Nice. Probably going to have to cut that one aspen down there, though. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah. Okay. We're almost to the point to where just once we clear that out and pick through that, 
we're ready to start dropping all these big logs. Okay. And then that's the other thing is that we need to create a space where we can stack pile, them. pile those up. Yeah, so we can use them later. Yeah, okay. And there's like two, two at least two good logs that are two good, yeah, logs for a cabin out of that one. Yeah. And that, nice. one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. That one over there, that one over there. There's. Yeah, they're nice and straight. Over, yeah, good they're size. nice and straight. They're good. They're big around trees. Yeah. Okay. They're going to be. I don't want to fall them on a windy day, though. Yeah. <laughs> Let's, yeah, let's have a little measure of safety. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Lift it up a little. There you go, now pull out. Um, right now, we're just trying to get an excavator to come in and bring us loads of pit run, which is like basically just stuff right off the bank of the Copper River. And it's just got, you know, a lot of ash and sand um and, and and clay but it's also got a lot of big rocks and small rocks and that's kind of what we're going to use to fill in this whole area to create a big giant pad and then that's going to give us a space to build on um and it's going to be pretty large because we've got to have if you look around here you can see our drive in is pretty it's pretty unlevel so you can see this is going to be kind of the um the approach to go into the shop you can probably see that pink flagging over there um that's one corner of where the shop will be so we got to build all that up because it kind of slopes down and then of course we got some little rises in here where the trees are and so we're gonna have to build up to that level um beyond that a little ways or almost to that level and uh we got to build up our driveway here too and we also need to make sure that we have enough area for the trucks to swing in here because they're going to be pretty big trucks bringing lots of stuff so that's where we're at
So we hadn't actually um, installed our wood stove in the tent yet. We, it's just been really pretty comfortable. Um, we have a little propane little buddy heater that we can turn on in the mornings if it's cold, but it's supposed to rain most of the day today. And so we decided we we're gonna go ahead and put the wood stove in, but then we also wanted to make sure that our tent site was a little bit more fire safe. <laughs> with the wood stove and it's also really, really windy today. It's supposed to be gusts up to 30 miles an hour. We just wanted to clear all this space, get rid of some of the branches down below, kind of like what I've been doing elsewhere, <laughs> right here where we're camped, um, but we hadn't really done it around the tent. We're um, just about through with that and then we're gonna put the wood stove in and the wood stove will also be handy because it will help me dry laundry that I need to do. This thing is so ridiculous. It's so, I mean, it's so, uh, so much more than is necessary to eat this small space. <clears throat> yeah, if we had to do it again, we would have probably gotten a smaller little stove. Um, I feel like a lot of the really good small ones though have come out since we purchased this. Maybe yeah. they were less available. Yeah. This was kind of like and more expensive than yeah, that's true. Yeah, but it definitely heats things up. It's just it's more than necessary for this small space. Honestly, I think once we build our shop, we could put it out in the shop in oh, some yeah. corner, and uh, mm -hmm. totally you know get better pipes and stuff and right. uh, a better flute. And I think yeah. that yeah, yeah, that will help. Let's put it in the tent. You got it okay? I'm gonna pick it up by the legs because they always fall off. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> so there's this heat mat that comes with the stove and it does a great job of protecting the floor of the tent. But we did discover once when we had an especially hot fire that the tarp that we put down below the tent actually got a burn hole in it. But our tent was fine, the floor of the tent and this mat was fine. It's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, these stoves can get ridiculously hot. We are not interested in doing that anymore. But a couple of times we, when we've been camped in the winter, uh, the, we've gotten it so the pipe is like red hot. So that's not safe. We're not gonna do that this time around. It's not that cold. It's just gonna be rainy and um, clammy all day long, so. And put the stove to use today. Yeah, there's some things too I don't like about this. Like for example, food on this is not very good, so you can't really dampen down the fire. It does have a little adjustment here, airflow. It burns really good, but as far as actually being able to get it to choke up for the night and hold a fire all night long, that, that doesn't happen. you got to get up in the middle of the night. 
can do it. And that's obviously probably true of a lot of these smaller stoves for for uh, canvas tent camping. But anyway, it'll keep us warm. That's for sure. I'm gonna put the top on. One of the things I also did is drilled some holes in the pipe. And the reason I did that is because they don't really fit together that well in my opinion. And by drilling some holes in the pipe, I can screw in little metal fasteners to it. This kind of holds them in place a little bit better. Stove. It's so cozy. Lenny loves to lay right behind the stove and sometimes underneath the stove. He's a, he, look, he's already laying down in front of it. He's ready. <laughs> ready for it to be lit and blazing. We didn't bring this last year. Um, it's heavy. It's really heavy, but also we just thought, oh, we're not going to really need it. It's summertime, blah, blah, blah. And most of the time it has been pretty comfortable, warm. But I don't know what the temperature is supposed to be today. It's low 50s yeah. to the mid 50s most of the day, it sounds okay. like. All right, there's one. With the wind today, it's just not a really good day to be cutting down trees, so. Well, I might do some, some underbrush later. Some inside tasks or, yeah. I think I am. There you go. The torch. <laughs> the torch. The mini torch. Going. Got some Lenny approval. Now it feels like camping. Get a good little bit of coals going. Ooh, that must have got bent. It's never come off before. We got, we got redneck stew here. <laughs> got some taters frying, some onions, some shallots, and we're gonna throw some carrots in there too. Oh, a red potato should already be in there. <laughs> 
crazy that ground beef is almost done. Wow. It wasn't even a lot of coals. Doesn't need much. It's amazing. Time for this. So you got ground beef, peppers, Carrots, celery, peppers, some sausage. Sausage, okay, potatoes. This is now a serving stick too. <laughs> Apparently. Oops. Some peppers here. Nice chilies and some sweet tomatoes here in a second once it gets going and some seasonings. Incredible. Yeah, I'm gonna go check on the biscuits. Okay. Now it's a slow cook. Nice. So we weren't able to make the stew on top of the stove, partially because our Dutch oven has legs, which means it just wasn't able to get close enough to the heat, or we'd have to make this stove way hotter than we really want to. But I decided I wanted to try to make some biscuits, and um, I think they turned out pretty good. We'll find out. I'm hoping they're done in the middle. They smell really good. Put it over that. Yeah. There you go. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's funny. Sure? Yes. Want to a little spoon more? <laughs> no. <laughs> Here, you want me to hold yours? Yep. Okay. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That is going to be amazing. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, I don't doubt it one bit. Look at that. Those delicious biscuits. Well, technically they're Winco bulk biscuit mix, easy biscuit mix. But yeah. Oh yeah. It was really good. Yay. Let me try a little bit of the biscuit in there. Still really hot, so the biscuit is? Everything. Oh, so okay. just be careful. Okay. Mm. Really good with the biscuit too. Yay! A lot of different good flavors coming out. Mmm. Mmm. I feel like the biscuits taste better this time. Mmm.
got hot. Mm, wow. That is good. Oh, yeah. It's got some, some spice. Got some spice. Mm -hmm. mm, it's hillbilly stew with a cowboy biscuit. <laughs> or with an English teacher biscuit. <laughs> Although your dad was a cowboy. <laughs> and he did make biscuits and Dutch ovens and skillets. He did. I should have had him show me how to do that. <laughs> yeah, these turned out really well. I'm pleased. And the dogs aren't even begging. Maybe they can smell the spiciness. <laughs> Although it's never stopped them before. Nope. Maybe they're just too lethargic because of the heat. It's got to be like, what, 90 degrees in here? I don't know about 90, but... I would say it's at least 80. Yeah, maybe 80. Yeah, it's pretty I'm Trying warm. to get this laundry dry. <laughs> and baked biscuits. Yum. I like the crispy edges of the biscuits. Mm. And I also like the... <clears throat> The biscuits suck up the sauce. Oh yeah. Yeah, this biscuit mix tends to be a little bit salty. Kind of works with this though. Yeah. It's saltiness. Mm -hmm. The carrots are perfect too. Yeah. Those are really good. I'm gonna check on the biscuits. <laughs> if you can get out of that chair. <laughs> I think I need to inflate it just a little bit more. It is a very windy day.